30 minutes past 6 p.m. Thanks for choosing My Media Prime. This is a Thursday edition of Prime News on My Media Prime. We're streaming from Studio A at Fengudron Bange in Douala, the country's economic capital. My name is Gienda Peldrin Blanche King. And on today's edition, we'll begin with uh, this news from uh, the Redak, a group of five uh, civil society organizations led by Madame Maximilian Gombe of Redak have rejected the call by Camto to kick uh, out uh, President Paul Bia from power. This was announced during a press conference which took place today at Redak's head office in Douala. Let's now have, a, have an excerpt of uh, today's uh, event and the uh, declaration. Durant le 15 septembre 2020, au professeur Maurice Canto, président national du mouvement pour la renaissance du Cameroun, objet, situation petite de notre pays et appel à un front commun du 24 août 2020. Monsieur le président national, nous avons reçu directement ou indirectement votre correspondance du 25 août 2020 adressée aux membres de la société civile, aux intellectuels et universitaires, avec pour l'objet cité en marche. Nous l'avons lu avec toute l'attention qu'elle mérite et avec un intérêt particulier au regard du contexte national camerounais, profondément marqué par des clivages et, divis et divisions de toutes sortes. Bien que nous relevons des préoccupations liées au timing, au mot d'ordre relatif au départ de M. Paul Bia du pouvoir, Étant entendu que la société civile ne se place pas dans la logique de chasser un président du pouvoir et à la convocation des élections régionales, nous sommes d'accord sur la nécessité de la mise en place de ce fonds commun sur les questions pertinentes suivantes. La révision consensuelle du code du système électoral afin de garantir des élections libres et transparentes, la société civile amène depuis des décennies maintenant. Deuxième point, la résolution pacifique de la crise sociopolitique dans les régions du nord-ouest et du sud-ouest. Et enfin, la réconciliation nationale pour une paix durable, celle d'âge pour le développement au service des populations. Comment y parvenir Les représentants de la société civile désignés sont prêts à vous rencontrer pour qu'ensemble nous puissions mutualiser nos efforts dans un cadre de dialogue que nous voulons franc et bénéfique pour nos compatriotes et le devenir du Cameroun. Et agré, Monsieur le Président national, l'expression de notre parfaite considération. Les cinq euh, organisations euh, citées tantôt ont signé, Madame Gorbet du Redac, moi-même, Cyril Roland Béchamp de Nouveau Droit de l'Homme, Marie Quinn, Anou le Cameroun, Agbo Congo Bala du Centre euh, africain pour le droit de la démocratie en Afrique et Gladys Mbouya du FIDA. Merci. Some members of the ruling Sipidium party in Douala to subdivision have requested permission from local authorities to stage a protest on September 22, which is also the choosing data for the planned protest called by the leader of the MRC uh, political party, Professor Maurice Kamto, in a letter signed by the president of the CPDM youth wing in Vuri to subdivision. They are requesting authorization to uh, protest in all areas around the new Bell neighborhood. Details in the following report with Fon Quinta. For an announcement by President of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement Political Party, Professor Maurice Camto, to organize a nationwide protest to house the regime of President Paul Bia on September 22, 2020, there has been counter-reaction from politicians, civil society organizations, and religious authorities. His announcement of a nationwide protest has seen diverse reactions from the executive core with bans on all unauthorized gatherings by governors and other authorities in the center, littoral west, east and northwest regions. The most recent reaction is a press release signed by members of the ruling CPD and party in Duala 2 subdivision requesting permission from administration to stage a protest on September 22, 2020, same day with the CRM political party. In a letter signed by the president of the youth wing in Wuritu subdivision, Charles Ali Zonga, he requested authorization from administration to stage a protest in the New Bear neighborhood on September 22. According to him, the protest is a Republican and patriotic massive counter to defend the institutions of the country coming at a time when all gatherings 
have been banned in the Litura region. Though his request is yet to be granted, it should be recalled that government has banned any public manifestation in the country and warned that any attempt to protest on September 22 with meat fears resistance from forces of law and order. The Presidential Plan for Reconstruction and Development Committee has adopted a procedures manual for the restoration process in the uh, troubled regions of the country. In a meeting which took place recently at the Star Building chaired by the Prime Minister's uh, Cabinet and Presidents of the uh, Committee, the procedures manual is geared uh, to clarifying the process of assisting victims of the troubled regions, leaving no one behind, as our reporter Nora Kakebi tells us in the following reports. Cameroon government has developed a guiding manual for the reconstruction and development process of the northwest and southwest regions and is therefore determined to go through in restoring normalcy in the restive region. The manual which was adopted recently during the second committee meeting in Yaoundé at the Star Building was chaired by the director of Prime Minister's Cabinet who also doubles as the president of the committee Balungeli Confiance Bune and the representative of the United Nations Development Program. In this regard, the Committee for the Presidential Plan for the Reconstruction and Development Process in the Crisis Shattered Regions has adopted procedures in the manual that will guide victims and communities of the ongoing socio-political crisis in the troubled regions on how to be beneficiaries of the plan to regain their assets, restore livelihoods and a return to normalcy. According to Minister Paul Sassong, who is head of the committee, the idea itself came from the trip to the troubled regions during which a few concerns in terms of ensuring that only those who were effectively victims become beneficiaries. It's vital that we outline exactly what every victim, what every beneficiary should and must do to have access to the plan. The team for the reconstruction plans to solicit for funding of the project and train mayors on the collection of data. It should be recalled that in total, this presidential reconstruction plan for the rest of regions is expected to cost over $160 million, of which the government had initially said it would contribute 10%. It is all about the commitment of the government to bring short and medium transformational changes in the regions. Some persons living with disabilities in Kumba, southwest region of the country, have called for aid from the United Nations at this time when the country is battling with the COVID-19 pandemic. They were speaking recently as a commemorator of the United Nations at 75. Our reporter from Kumba, Tamfu Sidwan Dimbie, with details. Persons living with disabilities have called on the United Nations organization to come to their aid during this period of COVID-19 as they join to commemorate the United Nations at 75. Meeting in Kumba, Meme Division, Southwest Region of the Republic of Cameroon. These physically challenged men and women say the COVID-19 pandemic has brought untold suffering to them and members of their families. In the course of COVID-19, we have been so affected. Most of them have halted their petty businesses. And so many persons with disabilities out there, the COVID-19 have made them to stop their business. They are no more carrying on the business. Some of them that internally displaced, they don't have things to do. They, they cannot carry on their business that they would normally do. It has really affected me financially since I'm not able to carry on my financial responsibility and obligations. And I believe like myself too, it has also affected the um, persons with disability likewise too because some of them too they were doing their small small businesses to support themselves and, and their family. Some do not even have means to feel well, while some have developed trauma due to restriction accompanying the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. It's so difficult to them to even have five hundred fans to feed per day. But when coming up with COVID-19, they have been really they have been restricted, they have to stay in the house and nothing is given to support them. The Cameroon government is not willing to come to their aid, but these physically challenged men and women think the United Nations organization will be in a better position to help them survive during and after the COVID-19 pandemic. Then they can think of building us camps, building us vocational training center, building us camps. If the United Nations organization invests in the education of their children, it will be a better option, as most of them have limited means of sending their children to school. I will ask the, the UN 
to really uh, concentrate on education of people with disability after the COVID-19 issues because due to this COVID-19, their parents, they have no more carry on their business, they will not have a uh, finance to send their children to school. So As the United Nations celebrates 75 years of existence, under the theme shaping our future together with persons living with disabilities, the physical challenge in Kumba have addressed a motion for the world governing body to practice inclusion by embracing them into the contemporary society. Three weeks till the start of the 2020-2021 academic year, schools in the town of Betwa are using all strategies available to attract parents to their various institutions despite the presence of the novel coronavirus. More on this story with our reporter from Betwa, Jean Didier. Across the month of the début des cours, prévu le 5 octobre sur l'ensemble du territoire national, les établissements privés laïcs de la région de l'Est Use de toutes les stratégies pour convaincre parents et élèves. En effet, avec l'arrêt brusque de cours le 17 février dernier, les promoteurs d'établissements sont dans le désarroi. La plupart des parents ne se sont pas acquittés des frais de pension pour leur progéniture. D'où le manque à gagner des promoteurs éducatifs. Vraiment, ces parents-là qui nous ont promis de, de s'acquitter des de frais de, de le faire parce que euh, vous voyez, nous, à notre niveau, nous n'avons pas arrêté nos factures. Nous avons continué à payer notre personnel comme il était prévu depuis le début de l'année. Et ces parents qui nous ont présenté la douleur en faisant comprendre que c'était à cause des difficultés qu'ils avaient un peu prenées. Mais à ce moment où nous repartons, les choses sont euh, repartées, que les enfants vont en classe supérieure. Nous les appelons vivement d'être consensés et, et venir régler ces, ces factures-là pour que l'école continue à avancer normalement et que l'effet de, de, de ce corona ne soit pas catastrophique. À la Hope Baptist Bilingual Nursery and Primary School Bodo Maubertois, la situation est la même. Seuls 25 inscrits sur plus de 200 attendus. Les parents hésitent encore sur l'effectivité de la rentrée scolaire. Covid-19 oblige. La situation de l'inscription ici chez nous à Hope Baptist Balimba, nous y encore pour vous de nous pendant les trois semaines. C'est un peu là. Comme les parents n'ont pas les confiance que l'école va encore commencer cette année à cause des problèmes de Corona. Euh, même le moment que j'ai dit aux parents que l'école va commencer le 5 octobre, les parents ne sont non pas fait confiance avec ce qu'ils disent. Mais pour le moment, Dans les librairies et autres espaces commerciaux, les rayons sont bien achalandés. La plupart des ouvrages au programme sont disponibles. Restez attendus les parents, qui tiennent encore le pas, faute de moyens. Avec les salaires du mois de septembre et la cassation des tontines et des réunions, la situation s'améliorera d'une manière positive pour une rentrée scolaire sans infection au Covid-19. You're on to Prime News on my media prime. As the rains continue, the states of most markets in the country have left from bad to worse. Such is the case in the Munya market, Fako Division, southwest region of the country. The deplorable state of the market is what the people decry year in, year out. Details with Bokengo Kemia Worthy in the following reports. The Munya market serves as a food hub and more for many persons coming from different parts of the country to buy and sell their goods. According to traders in the market, the Muya markets have for many years now been associated to muddy roads, especially during the rainy season. The Muya market is also an in fact, it's not called Muya market for person inside Boya. First way they come from here is mud. Yes. That's in the past years, up to date, if you don't mention Muya market, First way the camp of in mind and in the rainy season. The bad states of road coupled with insecurity in the area makes accessibility difficult as well as turnout. Some traders say the way forward regarding the growth of the market is in the hands of the council and the power that be. In, for some this situation of more from market here, yeah, first the council authority and yeah, the government put their head together. See, if they give all over the hands of individuals, to not be do as we do something like just for satisfy the present situation with the way we see as the more dog or too much, but we know we want to make our way to be sustainable. But if the market authority enter, 
even though some TV will be sustainable with it, so that even if I might some traces the way what after the past the goal then even make some kind of drainage system then also make some TV to be sustainable. It should be noted that this market is one of the biggest markets in the southwest region of Cameroon with goods, services and food items sold at a very cheaper prices, making life a lot more easier to the local population and most especially students in the University of Boya. Some inhabitants in the west region of the country are demanding compensation from the government of Cameroon on claims of their properties destroyed since 1982. The savior structures were pulled down for reasons of urbanization and national development with promises of compensating them. More on the story in the French language with Gladys Pomotongina. <laughs> Les dégâts de Banjoun, 38 ans après qu'il leur a été promis des dommagements, se rue devant la préfecture de Kunki, où le deuxième adjoint préfectoral Omaru Bouba les réconforte et les promet réalisation de ce qui leur revient de droit. Bon, année 2019, j'ai fait cette dépense dans le budget. Cette année 2020, on espère que c'est ici dans le budget et que ça sera fini. Bien, pour moi, vous connaissez tous les problèmes que vit le pays avec la crise du corona et tout ça. Il y a un problème de fond pour le moment, mais on espère que ça a été l'esprit pour le budget. Néanmoins, ces derniers expriment leur mécontentement et ne souhaiteraient pas être payés à titre posthume, encore que leurs pères sont décédés sans jamais avoir reçu quoi que ce soit, bien qu'une décision présidentielle avait été signée à leur égard. Nous, aujourd'hui, les enfants, nous ne sommes pas prêts. Nous ne pensons pas que nous allons mourir pour qu'on puisse venir payer l'argent là, soit à nos petits-fils ou à nos arrière petits fils Depuis, depuis qu'on a détruit notre village, on a porté notre père et posé dehors avant de détruire. Depuis le temps là, notre père était, il, il était, on lui posait partout, partout, partout. Manque là, notre père devait le rester. Et notre père est mort. On ne nous a rien donné. Et encore le successeur, il a marché sur ça jusqu'à fatiguer. Nous avons été toujours nourris par cet espoir éphémère, avec ce rendez-vous éphémère. Il faut penser aussi que nous sommes des êtres humains, des Camerounais, comme tous les autres. Vous nous différenciez. Toutefois, le projet de construction de l'axe loup Bafoussam Yaoundé, cause de ce dégapissement massif depuis 1982, a bel et bien été réalisé. We now revisit the story of a 25-year-old lady in the far north region of the country who has been arrested for allegedly slaughtering her two uh, children. She was apprehended yesterday after the gruesome act. Uh, details with uh, Audrey Zatsa. It's Bajengo, a village in the far north region in the Pitoa locality where two female children aged two years old and nine months old more were to be found despite the interrogations of the family members their mother salamatu 25 years old remains silent according to the co-wife after having noticed the absence of the two children on her way back from the farm asked salamatu for their whereabouts but she didn't respond it is only after a second search in the accused room that the remains of the kids were found in a pot smoked like bush meat this is what the grand uncle of the victims had to say. C'est ma mère qui m'a appelé pour m'informer de la situation. Elle m'a dit que la femme de mon grand frère a tué ses deux enfants. Et elle les a préparés, mais elle n'a pas pu les manger. J'étais sur le lieu. J'ai vécu la scène. C'est extrêmement horrible. Alerted by the father of the kids, the forces of law and order have taken hold of the situation as they try to investigate the reasons behind such an act. Immédiatement, on s'est rendu sur les lieux avec euh, des éléments qui sont passés en consultation pour que ce qu'on a saisi euh, les peurs dans la maladie. The Bajengo neighborhood is still in shock as everyone wonders what could have prompted a mother to do this to her own flesh. The population of uh, Akak in the south region have expressed difficulties uh, facing in assessing the area traveling to different parts of uh, the region according to uh, inhabitants is a nightmare to many due to the deplorable state of uh, the roads. Details in the following report with student journalists on internship, Lem Meklia. 
The population of Akak and Kampo in the south region are decrying about the difficulties they face traveling from different parts of the region due to bad stretch of roads in some parts of the locality. The roads to these areas are held to the population. Commuters have to spend time figuring how to manipulate and cross over to their destinations with the degraded state of the roads. They have to take hours on the road before getting to their various destinations. Car owners are said to face lots of difficulties driving through these areas due to the state of roads. Also, they need repairs to damages in these areas. According to sources, this veritable nightmare started as a result of the heavy downpour in the area. The 30 kilometer stretch linking Kribi to Ngoro, where the seaport is located, has problem of accessibility, while the 45 kilometers which separates it from Akak and Kampo is a nightmare to the population of the locality, where even a four-wheel drive which is known to be adapted to this deplorable state of road is unable to move. Sources say passengers have to push the vehicles from these deplorable roads up to the accessible roads, thereby losing lots of energy. The population is wishing that locals of this village could be blessed with good roads for easy and quick transportation. The population of Dizange in the Maritime Sanaga Division of the Littoral Region have equally expressed worries over the recurrent land problems in the locality, calling on the intervention of the government, as our reporter Dolly Gonde tells us in the following report. When it is time for the rainy season, the inhabitants of the beach neighborhood in the Dizange locality of the Sanaga Maritime Division have the muddy terrain to face. Remarkable for its hilly nature, the inhabitants say during the heart of the rainy season, the almost heightened mountainous hills begin to collapse, causing usual landslides and a muddy terrain capable of impairing economic and social activities. Mais cette année encore, c'est très grave parce qu'il y a cinq endroits qui se sont écoulés. Despite the high risks involved, these inhabitants say braving the odds is the only last resort measure for survival. Nous, les venticulaires, c'est un grand risque pour nous. Il faut vraiment que le gouvernement doit prendre soin de cet endroit. With the coming of the high torrential downpours this year, the risks are even higher for the road users to bear. À tout que vous voyez là, c'est la boue. Tu as dit là, la boue arrive jusqu'au niveau des reins. Donc, tu t'as mis dans la mal. C'est un pour toi. Même failli, tu es un pêcheur. Coupled with more death threats, the possible landslides and the muddy terrain are greatly precipitated with the presence of this river streaming across the entire locality, which on the other hand serves as a source of income to these fishermen and these sand fetchers. Still characterized with standing water, the inhabitants say accessibility to clean portable drinking water is even more pertinent with them standing high chances of contamination. C'est un danger permanent pour les populations de biches particulièrement. Cette eau que nous vivons, qui n'est pas de bonne qualité, risque de donner beaucoup de maladies aux habitants de biches, tels que la typhoïde, les habits et beaucoup d'autres maladies liées à la consommation d'une mauvaise eau. Even though their common plights have not recorded any deaths yet, just like in the previous years, the population of the Zange is nonetheless calling on administrative authorities to reconsider their problems for possible resolutions. In sports, the intermediate Lions are in calm ahead of a VSC edition of the African Nations Championship to take place in Cameroon next year. The current training session ongoing will last for 10 days and uh, a sportsman uh, Fabrice Kendinga tells us in the following report. The intermediate Lions of Cameroon have commenced training ahead of the 2021 African Nations Championship to run from January 16 to February 7 in Cameroon. 30 players caught up by coach Yves Clement Aroga are presently in camp for a 10-day training session unfolding at the CAF Excellence Center in Bankomo in the outskirts of Yaoundé. Midfielder Mark Ojong Colon and goalkeeper Dande Dande Junior sums up the training session so far. We're believing in the coach that we had 
and she knew that um, we could be things, but with the COVID-19 alarm, we came and then spoiled everything. But I believe everything that happened, happened for a reason. Um, I could say, just like what I told you, um, we're just at home. With the training that we are training at home, it's not sufficient to take us to that level we want to be. The training that we're training at home is not sufficient to be the champion. The training that we're training at home is not sufficient to even have a victory. So I believe if we could start at the zero level, gradually, with the potential we have, believing in the coaches, I know we can still do it. It's true, it wasn't really easy, but it wasn't too difficult. You know, it's the first training session for the first time after the, after the coronavirus pandemic. So it's like uh, going back to school. Like going back to school is like trying to feel ourselves back in the pitch. And, uh, I, think, I think it wasn't bad. During the press conference on Wednesday, September 16, head coach Yves Clement Aroga announced that experienced goalkeeper Anya Fruit Derek will replace Simon Omosola who has made a move out of the country and uh, who recently signed for Cameroon Giants Cotton Sports of Garwa has taken part in two shan competitions the intermediate lions of Cameroon will host South Sudan in an international friendly game built for October in Yaoundé the intermediate lions who have nothing to write home about as far as the chan is concerned are in group A alongside Mali Burkina Faso and Zimbabwe the opening match will pit Cameroon against Zimbabwe at the Amadou Ajo Stadium in Yaoundé on January 16, 2021. The African Nations Championship was supposed to have taken place in April this year, but was postponed by the Confederation of African Football following the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic. Thanks for watching Prime News on My Media Prime. Ewan and Eli Nolinga produced the news coordinated by Faith Tata Berenio. My name is Genda Pelgin Blanche King. Until we meet again tomorrow at 6.30, God willing for another edition of Prime News. Stay tuned at 7 p.m. prompt. Kum Leonard will be live to give you issues or analyze issues in Cameroon, Africa and the world. Good night.